Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope you're having a wonderful day. On this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you something that I'm super excited about. It's completely new, at least to me. I've never seen any other crafter do this particular uh, idea. And um, I'm just really excited because the potential of different things you can do with it is amazing. So, we're gonna be making canvas duck cloth painted, okay, let me start over. We're gonna be made to, making painted canvas duck cloth stacked bows. And um, yeah, so as you're hopping on, say hello, let me know that you're watching, feel free to sprinkle, feel free to ask questions, all that normal stuff. And I will tell you where everything came from. So if you wanna take notes, that's just fine. Um, okay, so let's start with the main ingredient. Well, first of all, let me ask you, did you guys see this video yesterday? Uh, the other one's over here, but anyways. Okay, so this, when I was preparing for this, it made me start to think about how great it would be to be able to make a bow to go on this door hanger that would be the exact colors of the paint that I used to paint this before we drew all our doodads on. And um, I wanted it to be this same fabric. So that's how the idea got started. Um, I have stenciled on ribbon before, but I've never made my own ribbon using canvas duck cloth. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna be using the canvas duck cloth. This is white. This came from Hobby Lobby but you can get canvas duck cloth in ivory or white and, and a few other colors at pretty much any fabric store. It's real nice and thick and it's great to rip, okay? Then I'm, I used this kind of paint, but again, you can use whatever you want. This is Waverly Chalk Acrylic Paint. This color is maize, which is the Spanish word for corn. And that's what I used to do the little sunflower door hanger stuffies yesterday. We're gonna be using white. We're gonna be using their black, which is called pink. And then just to play around, just to see, I also did some in this color, which is called agave, okay? If your Walmart doesn't carry these, just use whatever craft paint, acrylic paint, chalk paint you can get your hands on because I really don't think it might, makes any difference. Okay, and then you're gonna want a variety of different brushes. And I'm gonna show you real quick some of the different ones that I've made. And then we're gonna paint and then we're gonna play. Okay, so these are the ones that I showed yesterday. They were the first ones that I made. These are just the canvas duck cloth, which you do need to paint it first so it's not floppy. This is what makes it kind of stand straight. Um, even though it's not wired, like wired ribbon, it kind of functions like that. So I painted it white, and then I did some messy kind of stripes using some black paint and a, a cruddy brush like this. And this one is painted white, and then I just used one of my Spencer brushes that we used yesterday with some, some of this yellow paint to do the polka dots. Hopefully what this is doing is it's getting your brain thinking, oh my gosh, there's so many different things that I could do. And um, I think these are gonna work best for the kind of bows that you just kind of stack, winky wonky, winky wonky, and then you either tie them or pinch them, or I, I like to use these little zip ties. This is what I think this is gonna work the best for. Okay, and then these are some other ones that I was just fiddling around with. This is that agave paint. Same idea, really, as these. But I wanted you to be able to see that. And then here is a black and white polka dot. I just painted this canvas duck black. And then I did the white polka dots with the Spencer brush. And then these are a couple that I used my absolute most favorite stencil in the whole wide world, the um, Victorian pattern stencil with, let me just show you real quick. 
If you don't have this yet, um, I use this every week, if not more than once every week. Um, anyways, it's called a Victorian pattern stencil and you can do a ton of things, ton, ton, ton of things. Maybe later today I'll share some more ideas of things that I've done with this. But anyways, you can get this at magnoliadiy.com. So I used this and here's the deal. This is super important. So if you're taking notes, write this down. I painted the canvas duck cloth with the paint. Then I used the stencil and ink. Not paint. You, I tell people to never use uh, paint, any kind of paint. Craft paint, chalk paint, acrylic paint, <sighs> milk paint, homemade paint, any kind of paint on your stencils because it really drastically shortens the life of your stencils. So this is ink that I used with the stencils. And there's a lot of confusion between chalk paste and chalk paint. And people think it's the same thing, but it's not. Paint is paint. Paint dries pretty quickly in the holes in your stencil and it's permanent. So it can permanently clog the holes in your stencil. Chalk paste is like the chalk that your teacher wrote on the blackboard and then could erase, but it's in a paste form. It's not permanent. So we're not using chalk paste today, but I want you to understand that chalk paste and chalk paint are two completely different things. And I, if you want to be able to use something like this way more than what they say, <laughs> I mean, like maybe even 50 or 60 times, don't let any paint ever touch it. You can paint something and stencil on the top of it, sure, but don't use paint to stencil. Okay, there's your little lesson. And then this one I made this morning using, let's see, I have a whole pile, using my new daisy pattern stencil, which if you ask me, it looks like daisies or it could also give the impression of sunflowers. So I thought that was pretty cool. And um, I wanna just, before we actually start painting and doing this, I wanna just show you some of the examples. Any pattern stencil, if you have some of these, works great for this idea. Um, there's the daisy, polka dots. It comes also with a, another little sheet that has a mini buffalo. This is chicken wire. Oh, here's the mini buffalo that goes with the polka dots. Little paw prints. There's a leopard one that goes with that. Um, this is the flower power. I use this a lot. The new cow pattern. Lace and berries. This one is called, whoops, Subway. You can see, I'm just going to quick show you these, that there's a ton of options. And um, if you have any of these, they would work for this idea. This is called Butterfly Pattern. Here's your lemon, lemon pattern. This is called Honeycomb. This is called Damask. This is the Big Buffalo. This is the Diamond. And this is that Victorian pattern, which is my personal favorite. Okay. So let's start at the beginning. And because I want to keep my desk here so we can continue working reasonably clean, I'm going to paint on a cardboard, cake board. It's Wilton brand. People ask me this all the time. But I have been painting on it for a few days. Um, it comes from Walmart, a pack of four for, I don't know, five dollars. And I will paint and spray on these, spray clear matte sealer on these outside until they're completely gunky. And then I'll flip it over and use the other side. And then when it's terrible, I will recycle it. So I think these are great. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do, I just tore off a piece is you wanna decide how wide do you want your ribbon. These are pretty wide. Um, this one is pretty narrow. 
So it just completely depends on the scale of your project that you're gonna be using it on. I can't tell you how wide to make them. That's in the eye of the beholder. I can tell you how wide these are though, and then you can decide what scale would work on your project. Okay, this one's about two and a half, and this one's not quite two and a half inches wide. And then this one, I bet you it's about, it's about an inch and a half wide. So they could be wider, whatever you want. And um, if you haven't worked with this fabric before, oh my gosh, it is so fun. Um, tell me in the comments if you've ever done fabric ripping. It is so oddly satisfying. Um, okay, so what you would do is you're just gonna take a little snip and then tear. And the beautiful thing, well, there's a lot of beautiful things about this. Let me get this off. Is um, that, that it will tear straight if you're using good cotton duck fabric. And it gives you this fringe, which I love, especially like on the paint, real painted ones. Can you see that fringe? I think it makes a big difference. Okay, so I am gonna just do one long strip and let's do it, let's do a super wide one just for the sake of it. Let's do three inches. Okay, so I, I made a little snip. Um, oh, somebody says, everyone give Heidi some hearts. You're so sweet. But I would love it if you did. Give me some hearts. Or even better, if you like this video, please consider sprinkling it to your social media so that your friends and connections through social media can see it. Okay, so then I'm gonna pull the strings out. And there's gonna be lots. I don't think there's anything that you can save these for. <laughs> when we're doing burlap, I do usually save them. Okay, so I've got a really long strip. Now, let's pretend that we're making something for this or for this. This is the other one. Okay, so if we were making something for this and we wanted to, you, oh, and by the way, you can use a combination of different ribbons with the, the, rib, the painted canvas duck cloth ribbons that you're gonna be making. You can do that, you can combine them. Um, that's totally up to you. I would use wired ribbon if you're gonna do that. Um, but, okay, so let's pretend that what we're going to make to start out with is something, a back piece. We want to. Okay, so how big would we want it? This is where it's good to know what your project's going to be. Because if you don't know what your project is, then it's hard to tell how big to make them. So I just cut this one. It's about eight inches long. And I'll do one more. I just took a little snip and then I tore it. And um, this fringy part here can be as big of a fringe as you want. If that's too big, then you can trim it down some. I would probably say to pull out the strings on the other side so that they're somewhat the same size. Does that make sense? Um, Cynthia Lardier says that she's from hot New Jersey. Well, I live in Atlanta. Well, not really in Atlanta, in the suburbs of Atlanta. And we have had the steamiest, hottest summer. 
This morning at about five o'clock, we had some kind of massive front move through that had lightning and thunder and, um, which of course it woke me up, but also it's made the day so muggy. Ugh, it's just hot and muggy here. Okay, so I just evened out about what the size of the trim is. And then you can do it on your ends as well. Just pull the strings and it will fray. Okay, now do you see how floppy these are? They're going to stand up better once they're painted. And we have a ton of options of what we could do. Let's, let's be wild. And let's, um, let's paint these black. So if I was going to do a design like this, which I'll show you in a minute because I did work ahead. And I painted these. So we'll play with these next. But if I was going to do a design like this, you got to paint the white paint first. But we're going to do black for these. So I'm just going to take my little bottle of Waverly paint and pour some out on a paper plate. And I tell you what, this particular paint is super thick. So what I usually do is I will dilute it a little bit. And I'm just gonna use this credit brush right here. And we're gonna paint. And I'm gonna put on my apron because I don't want to ruin my dress. All right, so when you're painting these, you, you have a lot of options. You could paint just the inside part where it's, um, where the fabric is solid and not do the strings or the fringe. I'll, sh I'll hold this up in just a second and show you. That's gonna take a little more concentration See how I've mostly just painted the fabric, but I think it's easier to just paint the whole darn thing. Seriously. So. And you, this is a messy craft, for sure. My fingers have been black and yellow and blue and white. And I've washed my hands about a hundred times today. Um, this does dry pretty quickly also. I think I need some more. Normally I'd be working from a big jar of the black, but my Walmart didn't have that in stock when I was there. So I had to grab a couple little jars of the little one. How can you see where you made the sunflowers? Well, Vanette, I would be glad to share the link or you can just click on the videos tab here on DIY Dreaming and scroll down and you'll see it. I made the video yesterday, so it'll be towards the top. And it's labeled, I label everything, so that you can find it. And you can come to this page, DIY Dreaming, absolutely anytime you want. And just, you know, if you can't sleep or you have a long car trip or whatever, and you're not driving, um, you can click on the videos tab and scroll down. You know, I have videos going back about four years. And they're all labeled, so you can just find what you want to watch. And, um, yeah. Okay, so these could be a back piece. We'll see how quick they dry. Get the black off my fingers. 
I'm just thinking, thank goodness I don't have a nice manicure <laughs> because it would be ruined today. Although I very rarely do that. Good morning, Fawn, how are you doing? Okay, so that is how um, you could do this part. And I'm just gonna move it aside so these can dry a little bit. Just set them right there. And let's move on to some that I've already painted. Where are they? Okay, I painted these. white because I wanted to show you guys and we'll we'll do some stacking so don't think that I'm just going to show you how to paint the um how to paint the canvas duck cloth okay so there's so many options here we could use um this I think I'll show you how to do the polka dots that's easy and let's do a black and white polka dot and then I think I'll show you how to do the stripes. And then we'll do um, a stencil. How does that sound? Okay, so I need more black. So I wiped off my hands prematurely. All right. Let's see. Brush did I use when I was doing this yesterday? It might have been this one. Okay, let's do the stripes first. So I put my paint on my fancy dancy paper plate, and I'm just gonna get it on this cruddy chip brush, and I'm gonna, you know, get some of it off, and then you're just going to. You can decide how far apart you want them. Do you want them to be precise? If you do, then you could use painter's tape. But I think they look better with sort of the blurry edges. You can see how super easy this is. And this is recreating this, basically. Tell me in the comments if you think that you're going to try this. I mean, I'm so excited about it. Why did I not think of this before? Um, I have not seen any other crafters do this kind of a project where you're painting on canvas duck. I mean, I've, I've seen other, cam, other crafters who do the stuffed, I call them stuffies. Some people call them soft signs. I've seen that, and I've, I've stenciled using a stencil on an existing ribbon, but I don't think I've torn strips of canvas duck cloth that I've painted or stenciled before. So that's how you get that look. And then, where did the other one go? Here it is. Okay, and then to get the, um, up here maybe I um these are the let's see these are the spouncer brushes it's a funny word s-p-o-u-n-c-e-r that I get at Walmart there might be one other size in here we're going to use this one because it's the littlest and these are under four dollars for a package of I don't know how many a whole bunch so and they're reusable just wash them and this one obviously has been used quite a bit. It looks terrible. So I'm just going to, I definitely need more paint. Let's use the lid. So I'm going to dip my spouncer into my paint and then I'm tapping it off a little bit and I'm just gonna lay it down in one spot and sort of gently twist it. 
and that's how you get polka dots. And when I do polka dots, I just kind of go up, down, up, down. Um, there's no formula of how far apart you put them or anything. If you don't like how they look, you can just put your brush back down again and twirl it a little more. And here is one where the center didn't really get covered, so I'm going to fix that. Dun, dun, dun. So, stenciling on these is really fun too. There's absolutely nothing that you need to do to prepare it. Um, I'm using ink because ink is for fabric and this is painted fabric, but it's still fabric. So, but I'm not using the paint on my stencils. I never do. I, when I first started stenciling, I did. And I ruined quite a few stencils that way. And now I have stencils that I've used 50 or 60 times. Isn't that cute? And so easy. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, taking care of them and not, not doing those no-nos. Okay, so let me get this off of my little desk here. I'm getting down to the bottom of my tub of antibacterial wipes and they're super wet. What did you miss? <laughs> You've been weeding, Becky says. Well, I'm showing how to make painted canvas duck cloth stacked bows. That's what I'm doing. And when I'm all finished, if you want to go back to the beginning and watch on replay, then you can get all the details. Okay, so when you're in terms of stenciling, this is basically what it looks like. And you can use any color ink. But for today, I'm just using black and white. This is basically what it looks like when you have that black background and I used my favorite stencil, the Victorian pattern stencil. If you want a link to that, just say link and I'll make sure that I get you a link to the pattern stencils. So I did that on this black and I also did it, same stencil, on the yellow. Isn't it cute? Um, and then I use, this was yellow also, which I'll make it shorter when I, when I go to use it. I use the Daisy Oliver pattern on this one. Okay, so, um, I could use black on this and stencil it, but I think what I would rather do, let's dry, let me give this a little, um, a little shot of heat and let's do some white on this yellow and some white on this blue. These are the ones that we literally just painted. They dry so quick. And this is just a heat gun. later if you want to see a post with a whole bunch of pictures that have did I just paint these I think I did maybe not maybe I painted these earlier um, if you want to see a whole bunch of pictures of 
the huge variety of things that you can do with that Victorian pattern stencil. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay these out here and then we're gonna decide what all over pattern stencil do we wanna use and I'm thinking my second favorite is the Flower Powers. Let me find that. This one, and it looks bad because I've used it a lot because I love it. It's a great stencil. Okay, so you're always gonna wanna mark the back of your sheet so that you make sure you know which side uh, it's gonna go on after you've washed it and dried it. And I'm just gonna lay these three strips out here so I can do all of them at the same time. And I'm not fuzzing this stencil because it's <laughs> well used. But I'm gonna push it down on each one of these strips. Hold this one down just a little bit, the best I can, because they do, the little painted strips do kind of want to curl a little bit. Okay, and then let's use some white magnolia ink. But like I said, you can use any color of ink and magnolia has a whole bunch of them. And if you want to link to the inks um, or to anything else, just say link. Okay, I don't think that muslin will work. Kimberly Holland is asking because it's too thin. You want a thick canvas or canvas duck. You want something thick. And I honestly feel like the muslin that I've seen and um, some of the cotton fabrics that are solid colors that I've seen, they're way too thin for this purpose. Okay, so I just put some blobs on my stencil. And I'm, you see how easy this is. Um, now stenciling, if you're new and have never done it before, it is exactly like riding a bicycle. Exactly. The first time you do it, the first time you rode a bicycle, most likely you can figure out how to stop and you crashed and you skinned your knee and if you skinned it badly, you cried and you said, I'm never gonna ride a bicycle ever again. <laughs> but you did and the next time it was a little bit easier and then after that you could go 20 years without riding a bicycle let me pull this up and um, not have to think or concentrate it just comes right back to you and that's how stenciling is you just get the feel for it and then it's not difficult at all look how beautiful that is I love this yellow color. If you're looking for a good yellow, this is Waverly Chalk Acrylic. It's acrylic paint um, from Walmart, and the color is Maize, M-A-I-Z-E, which is, um, in Spanish, that is corn. That's the word for corn. It's a great color. So anyways, um, if you had a first not great experience, with stenciling, then you're just like everyone else. <laughs> it just takes a little practice to get the hang of it, and then it's easy. Um, but don't quit if you had a first bad experience. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this stencil, this um, Flower Power is my second favorite stencil, and I don't know. It, Seems lately like it's climbing up my list, and very soon it might be my favorite. It's awesome. Okay, let's see what it looks like on this blue. Hang on just one second. Okay. Where is my squeegee? Here it is. So I just put a blob on my... Um, strip, my painted strip of canvas duck, and make sure I get all of it covered, and take off most of the excess, and let's see, oh, 
Oh my gosh. It is so cute. This looks like tapestry. I will get close up pictures. It's lovely. Wow. I am impressed if I don't say so myself. Okay. This stencil that has the ink on it, I want to get it washed as soon as possible. If I wasn't here live talking to you, I would go straight out to my kitchen sink. I would lay it in the sink and I would get the sprayer out and I would spray it with cool water. I might use my stencil cleaner sponge. It looks like this. Uh, it's not a magic eraser sponge, by the way. It's not loaded with all those chemicals. It's just a great sponge for cleaning stencils and a teeny bit of dish soap and I might go over that and then I'd lay it on the counter to dry with the sticky side up. But I'm talking to you guys right now, so I can't really run out into my kitchen and wash that stencil. That would be rude, right? So I'm just laying it, I'll show you, in a little a yucky tub of water face down. So it's starting to come out of the stencil until I'm finished here. And then I will go out into the kitchen and clean it. So that's how that works. Okay, let me get this off. And then we'll, um, we'll build some stacked bows with some of the ones that I have here. And I do get questions about this right here. Uh, it is a, what is it called? It's just a, a craft, um, if you can think of the word, tell me, because I'm not thinking of what it's called. It's a crafting mat or cooking mat. It was given to me by my friend, Deb Rossbroy. And um, she got it on QVC, but I've seen these on Amazon in all kinds of colors and different sizes. So, it's a silicone mat. Thank you, Patty Weathers. That was the word I was looking for. Okay, somebody's asking a question about adding water to paint. And what I use, because it won't grow a, a science experiment, is um, distilled water. And I just put it in my little magnolia spritzer. I don't use tap water to dilute my chalk paste or inks or water. I always use distilled water. So there you go. Okay, so let's talk about building a bow. Let's start with this. And I'm just going to do the crisscross method. Um, Dry enough. Let me give this just a little. morning for a couple of hours but you know <laughs> not everything doesn't always get done okay I've changed my mind let's start with the yellow polka dots crisscross and then we'll do the black and white stripes crisscross and then let's do these crisscross and then we could put one more something something like this in the center you can do however many layers you like. It's personal preference, totally. Um, or I could do this one. Or I think what I'll do is this one, actually. And I'm just going to use one shorter little piece. Okay, and then um, these are the zip ties that I've been using for the last year or so because this is what I have. I, they're um, Crafter, they're, they're Reese brand, and they're small, and they're kind of a clearish type color but you could use any kind of zip tie seriously 
Or you could even just pinch this together and tie it with some, some jute or something. We'll see how this is gonna come together since it's so many layers. Will I even be able to get my zip tie around it? We'll see. Yes, but just barely. Am I going the wrong direction? No, okay. So I just put that around it and I'm gonna just twist this tail around to the back. And then I'm gonna try to get my stack to lay as flat as possible. out the yellow and white polka dots okay and then I'm just gonna cut this tail off and when I'm looking at it now what I'm seeing is if I had a bigger zip tie it would be better that these yellow ones are way too long and with this style, I am just um, snipping and pulling. And when, when I'm all done, I'll make it be frayed. I'm not doing the dovetails for this style. Because honestly, I think with this style, the frayed edges look better. And you can fray them even after you've painted and stenciled them. Okay, let's do this side. It's way too this stack might be a little bit thick. <laughs> I just wanted to give you this idea because I think, well, I know, you guys are so crafty, that you could take this idea and run so many different directions with it. And possibly when I'm done, I might take the yellow polka dot out from behind because you really can't even see it. Um, we could do that right now. Let's do that right now. I think it'll be better. It's, it's really pretty thick. The regular ribbon, even the wired ribbon, is not as thick as this canvas duck. So, I'm just gonna snip that. And let's take off the polka dot on the very bottom. So we're gonna remove this layer and I'll use it for something else. This is gonna be cuter, definitely. Then I'm gonna wrestle with it for a little bit to get everything to lay out how I want it. Clip the tail off. And what you could do at this point is you could take some of your leftover fabric if you had any and cover this, or I could do the black polka dot or some black stripe or something else and just cover up that zip tie in the center. So here is my sunflower. And this size bow would make, and you could put it wherever you wanted. It could be right here, that could be adorable. Almost like this is a little girl and this is the bow in her hair. What do you guys think about that idea? just sort of off to the side.
Anyways, there's a lot of options. So that's with that one. This one has a different style hanger. I used some wire. So on this one, I could put a bow right here on one side. But I kind of like the idea of putting it in here. You like it by the corner. Patty, do you like it by the corner in here or by the corner out here? Tell me in the comments which way you, you prefer that. Okay, well let me just show you a quick review and then I encourage you to play with this idea. If you don't have any canvas duck, go get some. You can find canvas duck at Hobby Lobby. I sometimes get it at Walmart, but the problem with my Walmart lately is that there's never anyone in the craft section. So I have to go into the electronics or something to try to get them to page somebody to please come to cut fabric and it's a big ordeal. Um, but my Walmart does have sort of an oatmeal color canvas duck. I have not seen the pure white there. The pure white, this here, came from Hobby Lobby. You can find it at Joann's, at Michael's, at really any fabric store. So get some of that and then get some paint. If you don't have stencils yet, um, what would I recommend to be the very first stencil people buy? What do you guys think? It would be the Victorian pattern because you can do so many different things with it and get a, a little pot or two of ink. And then you can totally go to town. You can create so many different looks just by the color. Like if we had painted this piece of canvas orange, and Waverly does have a good orange. Let me pull it out. It's a really good orange. It's called pumpkin. This is from, Wal I get mine at Walmart. Um, you might be able to order it on Amazon. It's not a creamsicle orange or a bright orange. This is a pumpkin color. So it would be super cute to do some orange um, strips and then use that Victorian pattern stencil over the top. The white, okay, um, getting a good question. She's never seen anyone call this fabric canvas duck. Well, that's just what I've seen, how I've seen it labeled and what I've called it, but this fabric is the same fabric that they use to make ticking. And at Walmart, um, this is ticking. This is kind of a caramel color ticking. But I, at Walmart, this is right next to the blue, the red, and the caramel color ticking. And they're all made by the same company. So it's the same fabric as the ticking fabric, but it doesn't have any design on it. Um, okay, a lot of people are asking for the video on this. And if you'll just say link, then I'll get you the link to this video. I recorded it yesterday. I show, The funnest thing about, well, not the funnest thing, but I said this was probably the cutest uh, door stuffy I've made. Um, but the fun thing I did this time was I stuffed each compartment separately. I'm sorry about that. That's my son calling. Okay, so let me review real quick. This is yellow with black ink and the, and the daisy pattern. This is black with, um, with the Victorian pattern. Here's the agave polka dot and stripe. Here's the black stripe. Here's the yellow polka dots. Here's some agave that I just haven't done anything to. Here's the quick little bow, which I'm gonna fiddle around with this. I might do something else at the end of these little bits. Here's a black polka dot. Here is the flower power stencil, which is my second favorite. And yeah, and you can combine this idea with uh, regular ribbon, all kinds of things. So if you want links to anything, or even if you just want to know what the colors are for the paint, um, I can get that for you. Just say link and I'll be glad to get that for you. 
Alrighty, do it this or this or say something to me in the comments and that will improve the odds that tomorrow when I'm live, Facebook will say, here is Heidi's content. The, their algorithm is crazy. I don't understand that. People tell me all the time, I thought you quit, I haven't seen you in months. <laughs> and I'm live on here every single day. And they're like, I had, I liked your page or followed your page and everything. So I don't know. Uh, but you can always come back. Just type in DIY Dreaming into your search bar on Facebook. It's all one word, DIY Dreaming. And it'll pull up this page and then you can click on the videos tab and go watch absolutely whatever you want. Kathy, if your video is freezing, it's something to do with the internet on your side. So... I'm sorry about that. If you go out and come back in, it might be fixed. Alrighty, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed our projects and that you love this idea. And if you decide to make some, of, I'm calling, calling these painted canvas duck stacked boats. If you decide to make some of these, I would love to see them. So share them over in our group that I set up for us to share pictures. It's dreamy space. DIY, um, or you could even share them here in these comments. Uh, have fun. Let's see what you guys can do with this idea. And um, I'll get pictures and post those here in the comments as well as at DIY Dreaming. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you guys soon.